Hey folks, welcome back to another video. And today I want to show you how to split audio signals into multiple frequency ranges without changing the phase too much in a very, or at least for Bitwig in a very unusual way. So first I show you the problem or what the problem is. So we have here in normal modeled or analog modeled EQ zero latency, and we have here an EQ analyzer. So when we change here some bands, you can see we change the frequency content, but we also alter here the phase. So we introduce a bit of phase offset, right? And this is completely normal and it's also completely fine. Every EQ does that or every zero latency EQ does that. And I also have no problems with this. But sometimes you want to introduce here something like in low cut. And with the low cut, we bring in here also a completely phase inversion at the center frequency of this EQ cut. And this can sometimes lead to problems when you want to mix sounds in this frequency range. So let's say you have a kick drum, you had 80 Hertz, and you have this bass sound here that is low cutted at this frequency, and you layer the kick drum with the bass sound, and here we have this 180 degrees flip. Sometimes you can then um, cancel the kick drum or certain frequencies of the kick drum out with this phase inverted sound here. So it can lead to problems. In my opinion, it's not a big problem because first you hear it when something is wrong down there. <clears throat> and um, secondly, you can um, prevent this problem by side chaining. So you side chain the bass with the kick drum. So you duck the bass completely away and you don't have overlapping sounds there. Um, maybe sometimes you want to connect, um, you know, the bass with the, uh, with the kick drum, but it, you can fiddle it around and you can hear when it sounds right or when it sounds off, in my opinion. So it's not a big problem usually, but there are very precise producers out there that really want to nail this sound down here to never waste any 0, 0.00 dB uh, you know, loudness. So um, it's very important for them. So I want to show you here um, how to circumvent this maybe in a unusual way. So this is how normal EQs behave or normal analog modeled EQs behave. And we switch now here to a VST plugin called Ozone 8. And this one does kind of the same thing we cut and we change here at the center frequency um, the phase offset. And it gets even worse or more prominent when you change the steepness of the filter, right? We introduce more and more of these phase inversions here with the 24 dB per octave filter. We have again this 180 degrees flip. Um, so then you have an option inside of Ozone we sadly don't have this in um, Bitwig EQs, but here in Ozone, you can do it. We can switch to a digital mode. And now we introduce latency because the uh, EQ needs, needs a bit of time to analyze what's going on. So the digital EQ introduces latency. We have to compensate here for this in the EQ analyzer. And now you can see we have kind of a very untouched, very linear, phase response here, right? And we can make the curve here steeper and it doesn't do anything at the center frequency. We bring in here a bit of phase distortion down here, but there's no audio content here. We cut everything away, right? But at the center frequency here, nothing happens. So this is how it works inside here of the Ozone EQ. Um, again, we have now a frequency cut we don't touch the face, but this time we pay with the latency. So we introduce a lot of latency. Um, can we see this actually here? Um, let me see. Ozone introduced latency of 64 milliseconds, right? Compared to analog here, you can see there's no uh, delay or no latency introduced. So it's only the digital mode that does this. But sometimes, you know, you want to have the face clean rock solid, so we need to pay for that in a certain way. Um, and that's also true for a lot of audio processes. You never do just one thing. 
you always trade one thing for the other. It's never just one thing that you change and then the rest is untouched. So when you make something loud, right, you trade it off or you trade it with um, uh, transparency, for instance, right? So, um, and the other, the other way around. So you always, it's always a trade off. That's what I want to say. Okay. So let's disable here. Um, ozone, go back to this and let's see here how EQ plus looks like. Um, suggest. So EQ plus introduces a small little, um, latency here, 0 0.4 milliseconds for some reason. And it also comes already with some kind of phase offset here in the upper frequencies. But in my opinion, it's not a big deal. Um, and also phase issues in the upper frequencies are not a problem at all. I think you even want to have some phase offsets in the upper frequencies because it kind of glues the sound together, I would say. But that's how it is. This is how EQ plus looks like. So when we bring in here a boost, or a cut, it does more or less the same thing as EQ plus. And it's also kind of zero latency. I mean, 0 0.4 milliseconds is basically nothing. Okay, so this is EQ plus. Then we have here our main topic for the day. Uh, let's suggest here this. And now we have an three FX three frequency split. So we have a low frequency here. We have a mid frequency and we have a high or top frequency. So we could use this here to put some processes into these boxes, uh, phaser or um, compression or whatever. And I like to use this FX3 all the time, but you need to be aware of it that you bring in here some phase uh, inversions at these crossover frequencies. So when we change it to crossover, we also change these positions. Um, so you need to be aware of that. And when you, of course, use multiple of these here in row, right, you bring in more and more of these uh, phase inversions. So that's something you need to know if you want to keep the signal clean or if you don't want to touch the phase or, you know, you have some issues with that at certain points uh, in your uh, production. So that's how the FX3 behaves. And that's also not really uh, a big problem because we also have here uh, OTT, which is um, a VST. A lot of people use that. We can see we have the same thing here. We have phase inversions at these crossover frequencies. And you can also see here where these crossover frequencies are. It's typical OTT splitting here at 88 Hertz and also 2.5 K uh, here. Okay. You can't change these or across all frequencies, I think in this plug in here, but that's how it is. Okay. So ODT also does this and a lot of other multiband processors do this. You have to be aware of that. Okay. So then we have here a spectral effect. Um, that's called, um, frequency split in Bitwig studio. And we also have here a bit of latency now. Um, we can see uh, 42 milliseconds. It's even less than the ozone EQ. But we need a bit of time to do an FTT process internally to split the signal into multiple uh, sine bins, right? And then alter the signal and then combine it then at the end of the device again. So this is how it looks like here with a frequency split. So you can see we have multiple bands now here. So we can use this also as a band splitter. And then we can change the loudness of these bands. And these frequency cuts, cuts here are pretty steep. It's not, it's not something that sounds great when you do it. It sounds very spectral because in nature, this probably never happens to your ears that at a certain point, all the frequencies go completely away, right? So we have here in this frequency split device, this kind of crossfade amount. So we can bleed um, these cuts into each other as, as to, by small amounts. And you can see here, we have then this, make it, make it sound more natural. 
So this is how I want to put it. And you can see here, the face is never changed. The face is rock solid. So this is a way of splitting um, the signal to multiple frequency bands without touching the face too much. That's the frequency split. But again, we pay for this here with some kind of latency. Um, I think this is also yeah, the default preset, if I'm not wrong. So you need to have four splits because we have four boxes and we put then here in each of these boxes a different um, um, frequency range. I think this is here, this one. It's not really ordered. The red one is the, the middle one. <laughs> you can change here this by nudging this around. But it's, it's a great device actually for also splitting um, the signal. I use it sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Okay, so then we have a device that's actually a preset I want to share with you. And it also introduces a bit of latency that's not compensated here because it's not a device. And it looks like this. So we have here crossover frequencies, 88 and then 2.5. So it's an OTT splitter or a type of OTT splitter. So we have the low end, we can change this here. And the top, we can bring this down or maybe push it a bit. And we can also put processing in here. So we can use it for compression or distortion or whatever. So the big question now is how does it work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I use just impulse responses here. You can see there are different impulse responses here from EQs. So I just sampled a um, linear phase EQ for these frequency ranges, put it here into the convolution device mix 100%, wet gain is 100% and then you get the same effect. There's a bit of space here in the front and in the end, there's the pre-ringing, there's the compensation you need to do. And yeah, you can use the convolution device basically to split signals with this. Um, I also made your different versions of this. So I have here also a five split, for instance, looks like this, so we have here 0 to 200, 200 to 1000k, um, 1k, 5k, 5k to 10k, and then 10k to 22k, the rest of the frequency spectrum. So you can see you can use this to EQ stuff without, um, yeah, touching the face. Um, I only made two presets here, this one, uh, the first one, the OTT splitter, and this one. And I also try to make here some kind of low cut. It looks like this. It's a very steep cut, but you can change here the cut frequency by using this macro. But here the problem is this was actually inspired by some early, in the early 2000s, some people invented some EQs based on um, impulse responses. And I did here the same. I just put a lot of different EQ settings with impulse responses in multiple lanes or layers. And then I just switch here between the layers. So the trade-off with this method is that you have parameter jumps. So from here to here, it's basically 10 Hertz always, right? So 20, 20 Hertz, 30 Hertz cut, 40 Hertz cut, 50 Hertz cut, 60 Hertz cuts, and so, and so forth. So it's, it's the trade-off is more or less that you have parameter jumps, but it kind of works. It was more, like, more or less like an experiment yesterday. I want to show you this. I put you also here the presets in the description below if you want to download this and want to give it a try. It actually works pretty well. But like I said, the trade-off is that you bring in a bit of latency, I think 20 or 30. How long are these? 30, 33 milliseconds of um, latency. All these impulse responses have the same length. That's important that you have this uh, center thing here at the same position. Um, you can try to make some weird things here by offsetting this, <laughs> get something like this, or bring in here this EQ. Um, let me bring this back here. Or maybe switch back here to the this, uh, this cut. Um, oh, there's an EQ cut here, okay. 
suggest. And then you change the EQ. You can kind of tilt the spectrum with this. It's interesting. Uh, you can change the pitch of the impulse response. So you get some weird effects and artifacts with this. So you probably can also sound design. I haven't tried it yet. Um, so yeah, multiple presets, also multiple impulse responses you can download here in the description for free. Like I said, I have this low cut uh, preset here um, to cut frequencies. Then X split, that's the five band splitter. That's the one band splitter or two bands, two band splitter here. It looks like this. So it's from zero to 88 and 88 to 222. So you can use this then to maybe process everything that's above 88 hertz. So if you want to process, let's say, um, a bass sound and you don't want to touch the sub, you can use this for, for this. Uh, also, trade-off is you can't change the crossover frequency. If you want to have a different crossover frequency, you need to uh, render different impulse responses. That's the big thing but usually you want to have this kind of the same center or crossover frequencies in different splitters okay so we have here this preset this preset this and then this one here this was the first one i showed you uh three band splitter yeah i put this in the description below so you can try it out you can experiment with it maybe give me some feedback what you think about it if it's worth to use it if it sounds if it sounds bad it sounds pretty clean you can put everything through it it sounds completely clean you can also see it here in the eq analyzer it doesn't do anything um so yeah that's it for this video thanks for watching leave a like leave a comment and thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.